Okay, welcome to my new video, and today I'll be doing a EAUC 3 sort of fight between Nate Diaz and Dustin Poirier. And actually, the interesting thing about this was that I simmed two of the fights, and Poirier won by head kick the first time they fought, and Diaz won the second time by a overhand hook. So this will pretty much be the rubber match to see who will actually be better, because right now they both won one on wins and losses. So this fight should pretty much be very monumental because it's a championship fight, and this is because uh, Nate Diaz suggested maybe like a few months ago that he wanted uh, Dana White, the president of the UFC, to create a new uh, 165 pound weight division so that maybe Diaz could finally win in both ones. And Poirier accepted and ultimately, however, uh, Dana refused to fight and it never happened. But this is what it would be like if it actually happened in a video game because, you know, we're not Dana White here, you know, we're, uh, we're just gamers. So of course Dustin Poirier obviously has heavy heavy hands, won three fights in a row by KO and he's a former fight of the night winner. So if Dustin Poirier was seeing sort of a fighter that's very very similar to Cub Swanson, uh, sorry Cub Swanson, a very uh, stand up, stand and bang kind of fighter. But he also has um, some ground game experience being a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And let's see his opponent here with Nate Diaz now, the man that choked Conor McGregor out and obviously exploited Conor for his uh, Weaknesses within the UFC sport, and here he is, um, Stockton's own Nate Diaz. He's back into the game now after uh, losing to Conor by decision, I think, last year. And let's look at some of the statistics for Nate Diaz here. The Ultimate Fighter Five winner made pro debut in a nineteen and good good conditioning. I would also add that Nate Diaz has a pretty amazing chain. The fact that he can take a bunch of uh, punishment. Uh, his boxing, even though he may not have the heavy hands that Poirier has, the fact that he keeps tagging you will eventually piss off that point, I guess, I don't know. And finally, he's a um, black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so if you try to grapple with him and take him to the ground, um, I don't think that's a wise idea here. So as you can tell, Nate Diaz is obviously much older, he is much taller, and as such, because he's older and because he is taller, he's going to be the bigger fighter with 66 or 76 inch as opposed to uh, Poirier 72 inch reach disadvantage. So Bruce Buffer here he is uh, hyping up the fight, the rubber match for the belt between uh, Poirier and Diaz. So let's get right into it here. Here is Nate Diaz uh, warming up along with Poirier. Here we go. Both men, uh, I think they have a lot to uh, really gain or lose, you know, f because this is a rubber match, because this is a simulation, and because this is for the belt, I think both men want to come into this fight with the with their game plans from the coaches and their partners and a full count, you know, ready. They want to make sure that when they're fighting these kind of fights, you know, that the nervousness doesn't get the best of them, that they follow what their coaches and and people and supporters say because if not, if they fuck up, then it's their fault that they don't come home with the belt. And that's just not good. But anyways, uh, Poirier 5'9", 155 pounds. He's from Coconut, or he's fighting from, sorry, Coconut Creek, Florida, United States of America. So here's the diamond Poirier here. And I think with Poirier, um, his stand and bang kind of approach, the fact that he has heavy hands, um, very good shin, and also, um, Pretty good footwork makes him a very, very uh, tough opponent. Anyways, even though he's much shorter because he can land heavier punches. And here is the Nate Diaz, six foot, 155 pounds. And he is fighting from his um, hometown of Stockton, California. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think Poirier obviously has a disadvantage on the ground. Even though he's, even though he has a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, um, you know, compared to Nate Diaz's um, constant submissions over past opponents, I think the ground game isn't something he should really go for. I think Dustin Poirier should sort of close the distance and start landing the heavy punches as soon as possible. Now, if I were Nate Diaz, I would also use my height and my reach to keep Poirier at bay and to keep landing the jabs, the quick, the one-two succession jabs, and, and follow it with a kick or overhand, you know, follow it with a nice combo, a strong hit in the end. And both men are just sort of staying there. Nate Diaz with the uppercuts, the early on the by Nate Diaz. And Poirier kicks Nate Diaz, now Diaz a bit stumbled. Both men are really close to each other for some reason. Uh, Nate Diaz trying to um, 
I don't know what his game plan is, but he's not really using the, that distance that I was talking about. And both men are just sort of staying and banging here. And again, remember, this is for the belt and this is the rubber match uh, sort of uh, bragging rights. You know, whoever wins this fight will pretty much be better than their opponent, I guess. And Poirier now landing in the the heavier combos. And this is what I kind of advise Poirier to do is to, you know, um, close in a distance and to land into heavy punches. Because even though Nate Diaz's shin may be very, very durable, I think repeated exposure to um, withstanding damage just can just, you know, take him out of his element. And pull your misses of that overhook there. Now Nate Diaz is trying to size up his opponent. And Nate Diaz's cardio is definitely saying, uh, sort of like Cain Velasquez's cardio. The fact that he can go five rounds without being so fatigued is what makes him also a very kind of Terminator-esque kind of character. You know, the fact that he keeps coming at you, no matter how bloodied or damaged he may be. He fights like every fight is his last. And Poirier now going for the ground. Very nice take down here by Poirier. Yeah, but he has to watch out for Nate Diaz's submission. And Nate Diaz already goes in for the guillotine, the uh, front neck guillotine. And he has that shit pretty synced in. And Nate Diaz now, he might actually win his fight by submission here. Let's see if Poirier can hold on. And he taps! Nate Diaz wins by uh, a, a guillotine. And I think that was the plan of Nate Diaz all along was to um, withstand the heavy punches of Poirier and once Poirier took Nate Diaz down to the ground he was fucked from the start and obviously a very very uh let's look at replay here a very very tight choke as you can tell both arms wrapping around the neck like an anaconda squeezing his opponent's uh um squeezing the life out of their opponent and that's a very very tight neck snap there if anything you might actually rip his head off or some shit like that but Honestly, was I really surprised? Not really. I mean, you know, like I said, even though Poirier has the jiu-jitsu, even though he's a brown belt, you know, it does not compare to Nate Diaz's constant submission uh, wins over past opponents. You know, it doesn't make much of a difference. And I think that is something uh, Poirier will always be lacking is the ground game, you know. So it was interesting to me that Poirier would actually go and take Nate Diaz down. You know, he was doing really good on the stand-up game, but I don't know why he shot for the takedown. You know, and that was his biggest downfall was that maybe he got a bit too cocky. Maybe he thought, you know, by tagging ideas, by sort of making him stumble, that he could finish on the ground and pound. But Nate Diaz had other ideas. And here is their new champion, Nate Diaz, finally winning his first belt in the AUC 3. But who knows if he'll win a belt in a real life uh, UFC environment. But with that being said, that is my commentary for now. I will probably be doing two other commentaries on different fighters and... With that being said, thank you for watching my video and I will see you guys in my next one.